Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss electrophilic addition of halogens to alkenes leading to vicinal dihalides. The overall reaction that we are considering involves the reaction of an alkene with a halogen, either chlorine or bromine, and the product of the reaction is going to be a dihaloalkane that is specifically a vicinal dihalide, meaning that the halogens are going to be on neighboring adjacent carbon atoms in the dihaloalkane. A key step in the reaction involves the reaction of the halogen in such a way as that we have a heterolytic bond cleavage with one halogen becoming a cation and the other halogen taking the electron pair with it as the halide. The cation halogen, either a chloronium or bromonium ion, will be the electrophile in the reaction and it will attack the carbon-carbon double bond of the alkene. The mechanism in the case of reaction with the simplest alkene, ethylene, looks like this. So we have a carbon-carbon double bond and we have a halogen we have the electron rich double bond attacks the electron deficient halogen we have heterolytic cleavage of the halogen halogen bond and as a result We get first a cyclic structure with a positive charge plus the halide. The next step involves attack of the halide on electron deficient carbon and then cleavage of one of the carbon halogen bonds. The result of this, now notice that this is anti-attack because it's coming from the opposite side of the halogen that is currently in the um, cyclic structure there. And the result that we get is going to be a vicinal dihalide where we have halogens attached to carbon atoms that are neighbors, that are adjacent to each other. As a practical consideration, reaction with fluorine is far too vigorous to be useful, and reaction with iodine is far too slow to be useful. So the two halogens that we are going to examine in detail are chlorine and bromine. In this video specifically, we are going to look at electrophilic addition to four alkenes. The first alkene is simply ethylene. The second is propylene, also known as propene. trans-2-butene and two methylpropene which is also known as isobutylene. We are going to present the results of high-level 
electronic structure calculations, which can give us insight into details of the reaction. An important issue arises whenever we have an asymmetric alkene, such as propene, propylene, shown here. The first step in the reaction is the formation of a cyclic bromonium ion. So we have bromine plus adds to the double bond. and we convert the carbon-carbon double bond into a single bond, and we have sigma bonding of the bromonium ion to each of the two carbons. What is not obvious is that the bromine is actually bound more closely to carbon number one here rather than carbon number two. In other words, this triangle is not an isosceles triangle, it is a scalene triangle. With the leg from carbon to this, to bromine, being shorter than the leg from bromine to this particular carbon. We can recognize the importance of Markovnikov's rule in this case. We know that if we had electrophilic addition of a proton, H+, it would add to this particular carbon because in the process, it would generate a secondary carbocation and the first step involves the formation the most quickly of the most stable carbocation. In this case, we get exactly the same sort of addition and that bromine attacks to this particular carbon preferentially over this carbon. In Markovnikov's original paper, he talked about it being in terms of the electrophile adding to the carbon that is under the less influence of other carbon atoms. So this carbon is under more influence of carbon atoms because it's a secondary carbon, whereas this carbon is a primary carbon. So the first step is the formation of this uh, cyclic bromonium ion, but with bromine being ever so slightly closer to this carbon than to that carbon. Then in the next step, we have nucleophilic attack of bromide. Where we would expect it by Markovnikov's rule at the secondary carbon. The result of this reaction is addition of bromine to this carbon as well as to this carbon. Once the vicinal dihalide has formed, we do not recognize a Markovnikov product versus an anti-Markovnikov product, for example. But we can recognize in the intermediate steps of the mechanism that Markovnikov's rule actually applies.
please note in the following table is demonstrated, uh, is listed, the results of electronic structure calculations, particularly the enthalpy of reaction for the uh, halogenation of four simple alkenes. Notice in particular that the enthalpies are always negative. By thermodynamic reasoning, we understand why the reaction, since it's spontaneous, must be exothermic. But also, perhaps surprisingly, that it's more exothermic for chlorine than it is for bromine. But with a little bit of thought, this makes perfect sense because we realize that, for example, that the reaction with fluorine is so vigorous and so exothermic as to be um, dangerous and hard to control, and that the reaction with iodine is so little favored, is so little exothermic as to be unusual. It does make sense in light of the relative uh, reactivities of the halogens with alkenes that the uh, reaction is exothermic, but it's more exothermic for chlorine than it is for bromine. In the next series of slides, please note various different intermediate structures in the reaction of propene with bromine to yield the 1,2-dibromopropane. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.